Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo, and I'm here once again to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Vasya of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. E. Adeboye. Now, if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, or if you know me personally, you may be asking, now, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Because we have many great Christian daily devotionals in the body of Christ, many great Christian books. Why have I chosen to share this particular one by Pastor Adeboye? Well, good question. The reason I'm sharing this particular daily devotional is because as I prepared to enter into the year 2020, which was two years ago, the Spirit of God instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional on YouTube to be very specific. Uh, and I was able to start that assignment in the month of June 2020. So I shared this devotional for some months in the year 2020 and 2021. And in this year, 2022, I've resumed sharing the daily devotional from the month of June, from the month of July onwards as the spirit of god instructed me now all those videos are loaded on my youtube channel i will encourage you to view the videos and you will definitely come across topics that appeal to your spirit and when you listen you'll be blessed now even though i share the daily devotion i watch the videos and listen to the videos on a daily basis you know and i'm mightily blessed by the word of god now while you're on my channel please don't forget to subscribe tap the notification bell you know click all so that every time i upload a video you're aware May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Today is Sunday, September the 18th. Sunday, September the 18th. And the title of today's daily devotional is The Benefits of Witnessing Part 3. Now, from Friday, we started uh, this series titled The Benefits of Witnessing Part 1, Part 2. And today is Part 3. Praise God. And Pastor Deboy has been sharing some very important um information with us you know there are some things that are key that you need um in your christian work and i i prayed you know when i started the series that god please help me so that this information this rema would remain with me with me all the days of my life amen um and while i know you're in church today uh watching online or in person and i pray that god will bless you with the word of god i'd like to say a big thank you to the pastor who is um sharing this with your congregation i'm very grateful sir May the Lord bless you and bless your congregation in Jesus' name and bless the word of God that is coming forth today. Praise God. So let's go straight into the daily devotional. Um, the scriptural reading is taken from the book of Romans chapter 8 verses 19 to 23. Book of Romans chapter 8 verses 19 to 23. Just six verses. Uh, normally I read from the traditional King James, but sometimes King James can be a bit complex with the whence commerce thou, you know, superfluity of not uh, nothingness, things like that, you know, and it's, um, so sometimes I do read from the modern translations, but, um, for this particular verse as complicated as they are, I'm choosing to read from the King James, you know, because I don't want to lose the meaning and I will explain, praise God. So Romans chapter eight from verses 19 to 23, King James version, just goes the reading of God's word. He says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. But not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wait the redemption of our body. Praise God. May God bless the reading of his word. Romans 8 is um, a chapter that I titled um, The Cry of the Spirit. You know, there's therefore now, it's, it's in that chapter, you see the verses like, there's therefore now no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You know, so, um, so many, if Christ be in you, though the body be dead because of sin, the spirit gives it life. The spirit gives it life, you know, because of righteousness. Verses like very important. It says as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. A very, very deep, lovely, sweet chapter. Amen. So in this particular chapter and in these verses we read, you know, um, 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's talking about the whole world is just waiting for the children of God to come on the scene. 
amen to come and display the many-sided complicated manifold wisdom of god you know um the bible says arise shine your light is come and the glory of god is risen upon the earth so the whole creation is waiting for this breed these children of god these people who have the spirit of god to arise you know we're waiting for they're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god and the next verse says that for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope the creature was made subject to vanity it means that the earth not willingly not by any choice of theirs man mankind not by any choice of that them theirs not willingly were brought under the cross of god you know when god uh, when adam sinned because of adam's sin um it, the curse of the lord came upon the earth you know but you know they, they, they didn't it wasn't they it, and the bible says everyone who is born after the similitude of adam carries that sin so it says here that the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly you know but it says that because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god so the day is coming when um, the creature will also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. You know, um, when you are born again, you are delivered from that bondage of corruption because of the death of Jesus Christ and you are translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Amen. That's when we preach the gospel, you know, and people are saved. He says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travelleth in pain together. And not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to read the redemption of our body. You know, life has, be, has gotten to a stage where people are just saying, Lord, come. Come quickly because the trouble is too much. You know, the climate change, the flooding, the um wars you know and every people are just saying god the creation is groaning even we ourselves who are born, born again we say lord jesus christ come quickly because there is so much trouble in the world russia killing people you know families have been destroyed you know wars here and there famine you know and ah uh, people are just saying we're just tired and saying lord let jesus christ come quickly and you know we're preparing for the rapture just waiting for god to bring deliverance like the children of israel when they were in egypt they were just looking unto god that one day god will bring them out of this bondage because the suffering was too much praise god let's go straight into the daily devotional i hope i'm within my time benefits of witnessing part three now the memory verse is taken from the book of matthew 24 verse 14 and it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come and this gospel this gospel of our lord jesus christ of the kingdom the kingdom of god shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations after that then the end will come now pastor says that every athlete on the racetrack is always looking forward to finishing to the to reaching the finish line the heavenly race is not a sprint but a marathon we have been looking forward to the coming of christ now for more than two thousand years i in particular pastor says have been running this race for almost 50 years now and i'm still running i don't know how long you have been running but i'm quite sure that you are looking forward earnestly <clears throat> to the return of our lord jesus christ well pastor said there's a way to the return of the lord jesus well there's a way you can make him return quickly sharing the gospel of christ and winning souls into the kingdom of god matthew 24 14 says and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so yes we are christians we know that you know ah the day is coming when you know we will hear that trump and you know the dead in christ will rise first and this is um we'll meet the lord in the air and that will be the end of all the troubles yeah but you see if you don't go by the way of the rapture um you know jesus christ you can go and meet jesus we, we, you know it's it can we, people we can die and go and um, go to heaven you know by the way of the grave that's fine you know and that's that ends you know we just close our eyes here and wake up in heaven you know and walking on streets of gold no more death no more weeping no more national of tea, no more suffering no more pain amen you know but pastor is saying that before the rapture will even happen just cry the gospel has to be preached in all the earth so if we are waiting for the rapture to happen the gospel has to have gone around the world first and then the end shall come you know so 
Pastor says the Bible reading for today says that all children of God are waiting earnestly for that day when we will be transformed and reign with our Father in heaven. But the only way to hasten the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is to preach the gospel. Until people who have not heard the gospel here, Jesus will not come. If you want him to return quickly so that you can reign with him in paradise, that is, of course, if you are sure that you will make it to heaven, then you will preach the gospel. I'm really looking forward to his return, Pastor says. So I will win souls even in the most remote in even in the most remote parts of the world. I've been to a country to win souls where there were so few in the whole country, everybody knew one another. Their prison inmates inmates were allowed to go home on weekends to visit their families and come back on Monday, on the next Monday. That is how small the country is. Pastor says I will go anywhere as long as there's someone there who will hear about Christ and become and can become saved. I am ready to go. Praise God. So if we want our Lord Jesus Christ to come back quickly, that means each of us must do our quota and win souls to the kingdom. The Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That means that I have a quota of souls that I need to win and you have a quota of souls that you need to win. And the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us. The only thing that we need to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the Spirit of God. Now, if you're born again, you already have the Holy Spirit, but you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus Christ said to um, to his disciples, he said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from above, and then you shall be my witnesses in Judea, in Jerusalem, and in Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts of the earth. So once you have received the Holy Ghost, and you are speaking, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you are speaking in tongues, you definitely can go out there and preach the gospel. You're not waiting to to be or then you say oh no it's a pastor you know me i'm not a pastor no god has called every one of us to do the work of an evangelist to preach god's word to convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching and you say i don't really know the scriptures as long as you have the holy spirit the little that you have in you when you open your mouth wide god will fill it you'll be shocked amen so we have to inculcate soul winning into our daily activities praise god hallelujah so if you want jesus christ to come we have to, you know, we have to make sure that we do our own part because God is going to ask us, actually. But I'm looking at that word that pastor says that I'm ready to go. And I remembered Romans chapter 1 that says, um, I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to Jews, to the black and to the whites, you know. I'm a debtor. I am a debtor. And he said, as much as he's in me, I am ready. I am ready to preach the gospel also to those who are in Rome. And then he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when pastor says, I'm ready here, I remember that I am a debtor, I am ready, and I am not ashamed because I have the spirit of God. Now, it may amaze you that Jesus has not come yet because you think the whole world has heard about him. Pastor says, I was preaching to a group of ambassadors about God one day, and after preaching for more than 30 minutes, one of them asked, what is God? I realized then that he didn't understand all that I had been saying since. There are still people out there who haven't heard about Jesus Christ and who will keep waiting for his return if we don't go out there to preach to them. Until they hear, Pastor says, he will not return. Thus, we must reach the whole world for him if we want him to return soon. So, if we want Jesus Christ to return, Pastor is sounding it again that we must begin to preach the gospel. Now, if we don't preach the gospel, if we don't preach the gospel and win souls to Christ, when we get to heaven, God will ask us, Amen. Who <laughs> ask us? The talent I gave to you, what did you do with it? Hallelujah. And because we don't know the day, the Bible says we must prepare to meet our God. God is going to ask us with the gifts I gave you, the gift of prophecy. They are calling you evangelist. They are calling you teacher. They are calling you prophetess, prophet, archbishop. And you know, you know, with all I gave you, what did you do with it? How many souls have you? Who did you tell about our Lord Jesus Christ? You know, and pastor is saying that it's not everybody who even knows about God. You know, so he was preaching to these ambassadors. Now, after preaching to them for the 30 minutes, one of them asked a the question, who is God? Who, what is God? What a question. Amen. And, you know, as I heard that, it brought to my remembrance Acts chapter 19, where um, Paul met some 19 guys, and he said to them, so unto what baptism? No, this, he said to them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? They're like, Holy Spirit? We've not heard about any Holy Spirit. Ah. Paul asked them, so unto what baptism then were you baptized? They said unto the baptism of John. Paul's like, really? Okay, well, John, the Jesus Christ that John preached has come. He has fulfilled his ministry. He has died. He has been buried. He rose again, and he has now ascended, and he has now sent the Holy Spirit, and he preached to them, and then he prayed for them to receive the Holy Ghost. So they were in Israel there. 
They had not heard that Jesus Christ had come. They had not heard that he was crucified because the story of the crucifixion went around. They didn't hear. They didn't hear that he ascended, you know, and they didn't hear that he had sent his Holy Ghost. Where were they? There are people like that who have not heard. No, but Paul took that opportunity and began to tell them that Jesus Christ has come, he's died, he's risen, he's ascended into heaven, and he has even sent his Holy Spirit. And then he laid his hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost and, be this, and began to speak in other tongues. So there are people like that. So the gospel has not gone around the whole world, you know. Praise the Lord. Now, pastor says, look for new people to tell about Jesus Christ. Look for new people. Don't worry. God does not sponsor flaws. When you open your mouth wide, God will fill it. Just say to them, Hello, have you heard about Jesus Christ? Are you a Christian? And start from there and God will begin to give you what you say. He'll be with your mouth and he'll teach you what you say. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and be very courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. He said, I've sent my angel before you to prosper your way. So when you go out on evangelism and say, God, I mean, you may be shaking, you're afraid. Don't worry, God is with you. Amen. And he will prosper your way. And use you to minister the gospel like you have never known before. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for giving us the grace to share the open heavens today. Thank you for your children who are gathered together in the house of God. Father, I thank you because you've sent your word. Your word is going to heal every one of us and deliver us from destruction. Indeed, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As your word comes, the Bible says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared before God in Zion, I pray that we'll go from strength to strength in our spirit, in our souls, in our bodies, and in our minds as we have appeared before you today in Jesus' name. Father, we receive fresh anointing, fresh unction to go out, Almighty God, and tell people that Jesus Christ is Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we receive that infilling of the Spirit of God to enable us to do the work of an evangelist in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing this daily de daily devotion or this video. God bless you while you're on my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe. Do tap the notification and God bless you. And have a beautiful day in church. My name again is Sister Temitayo. And God bless you exceedingly.